Hey, Ronnie. Hey, Lou. You're old. True. Let me ask you a question. Okay. Do you remember dating? <laughs> it was a long time ago, but I do remember dating. Yeah, my wife really frowns on it now. Yeah. Um, yeah. On today's show, ridiculous dating etiquette rules from the 1950s. Or are they? They still apply today. And we're talking about it next on Men Are So Smart. Dating in the year 2018. Mm. Things have changed, Ronnie. Mm. Or have they? Maybe not as much as you think. Let's talk about some dating etiquette rules from the 1950s and how they may or may not apply to today. Number one, making the first move. Ooh. Back in the 50s, apparently, guys were supposed to ask out girls. Only floozies <laughs> ask guys out on a first date. Ooh. All right, so there's number one, making the first move. I don't know. I kind of like it when a girl asks you out because sometimes, you know, women do very kind of strange things or very subtle things to let you know they might be interested in you. Mm -hmm. Without really letting you know. And men as still mostly Neanderthal. Cavemen. We don't pick that up. No. So if they go ahead and ask you out, that solves, seems to solve a lot of problems. I remember years ago when I'd be out with another friend of mine, a guy, and he'd say to me, that girl is checking you out. Yeah. I'd be like, what girl? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. <laughs> we, we just don't, we don't get that, no. you know? Playing with your hair, that sort of thing. Be more obvious. Right. Now, hold, here, hold, hold the phone. You're in the now year 2018, Ronnie. Yes. Should women, or is it okay for women to ask a guy out? I say completely okay. I'm down with it. I think it's great. Uh, because, again, men are... Less men than they were back then. So, yeah, if you're waiting for a guy to ask you out, you may be waiting for a long time. And you know, with the with the with the Facebook, the kids are all on, <laughs> and the Twitters, and then the and the internet. <laughs> uh, you know, the, the communication is so much easier now. Yeah. And technically, if you're shy, you don't even have to be on the phone talking. Boy. You can send a message. Yep. I don't know if that's really proper, but. Yeah. I'm sure it happens. Yep. All right. So today we're talking about ridiculous dating etiquette. Yeah. So rules this, from the fifties. This next one, uh, this and this is back from the fifties. Respond quickly. Okay. When someone asks you out, you're supposed to give an immediate answer to be polite. With today's online dating, not responding could mean you're ghosting someone. Yeah. Yeah. So, but still, doesn't it seem right? Hey, and I get checking your calendar and making sure that you've got everything, but 90% of people I know, their calendar is on their phone. Good point. So when they ask you something, you pull up your phone, you go, yeah, that day works for me. Yeah, let's do that. I listened to a, a, a morning, nationally syndicated morning show, and the guy that hosts the show is single, and he's very, very busy. And he recently met up with a girl for a date, and she said, well, what time? He goes, well, I have from 6 to 6.45 available. <laughs> I have a block of time. That's, Please don't be late. That's busy. <laughs> and, that's, and I thought I was busy. Now, that's busy. All right, so respond quickly. Well, I don't know. In the year 2018, yeah, you'll get around to it. Yeah. And if it's important to him or her, then they will get around to it. Yep. Next up, no excuses. Never break a date without providing a valid reason. Not interested in meeting up with someone? You're going to have to come up with something better than having to pet sit for your friend or remember those commercials? Oh, I've got to wash my hair tonight. Yeah. Or my Aunt Sally died. That, was my, that was my favorite commercial. Again. Yeah. <laughs> um, I don't know. I don't think people do that nowadays. I'm sorry. I'm, I have something, uh, uh, other plans. That's what you get nowadays. Well, I'll tell you what does happen, though, is somebody gets better plans. Right. 
So something they, better comes yes, up. Yes, you have plans to go play darts, mm -hmm. and then all of a sudden they get an invitation to go see the Beach Boys or whatever the case may be, whatever the kids watch these days. <laughs> something that's the MTV just that much better is enough for somebody maybe to cancel yeah. plans. You get bumped. It's, yes. like, it's like on a flight. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. All uh, right. All right, this next one, and this is be on time. People that are not on time, nut me up. I know, Ronnie. Nut me up. So bad, you can't even imagine. <laughs> uh, women should never be late to a date. When dates arrive, you should be ready to go. That was a rule decades ago. But you know what? I really still think it applies today. I, we often tell my in-laws when we're going to meet them for dinner that we're going to be there a half hour before. Uh -huh. So if, if we plan to eat at 6.30, we tell them to be there at 6 o'clock. Right. And then they will typically be Either there at 6.30. Right around 6.20, 6.30-ish. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So you learn to... Work around it. Work around people's... Yeah. Issues with being on time. <laughs> Our next one, <clears throat> I can remember a girlfriend back in high school. I went to, Ronnie and I went to the same high school, El Camino High School here in Sacramento, California, where we filmed the show. And there was. Which, which translates to the Camino. The. <laughs> the El Camino. Isn't that a car? Or is it a truck? In any case, uh, this girl, Kim, that I dated. Uh, before I could go out with her the very first time, I had to meet her parents. Oh. Getting introduced to your girlfriend's parents can be a pretty big step in a relationship. In the 50s, though, it was customary for girls to introduce all dates through to their parents first. Do you think that holds up into your 2018, Ronnie? Mm, not so much. Uh, if anything, I, I think what you get is a car that pulls up and a horn honked. Right. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, that's a big no-no. But... I know we didn't meet uh, Jessica's eventual husband for probably the first year, maybe. Wow, that is kind of a long time. But they were in San Diego. True, miles. So there was a there was a little bit of a yeah. A uh, you know, barrier. and for those of you watching around the country, you're thinking, well, you just said Sacramento, and then you said, what did you say, San Diego? San Diego. Yo, what, you can't drive there. Well, it's kind of about ten or eleven hours. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Uh, this one, applying makeup. Uh, before you left for a date is when you should be putting on your makeup. Primping in public is a big no-no. Yeah, I see people doing that all the time nowadays, like at the table in a restaurant, you know? Oh, God. Oh, it's kind of it. gross, actually. <laughs> yeah. Uh, hey, that's why they have restrooms. If you're going to, if you can do that, take it to a restroom. I don't. I, I don't want to see it. Right. I just... That includes, you know what? Nobody wants to see how the sausage is made. <laughs> True words were never spoken. <laughs> don't place your order. Back in the 50s, when you, a woman would go out on a date with a man, the woman would tell the man what she would like from the menu, and then the man would give that order to the server. Well, that's how I grew up. And I remember there was a time when my parents, I think I was about 16, and it was about the time when prom started in high school. Yeah. And my parents took us out to a, or took me out to a kind of a fancy restaurant to kind of give me an idea of what to do. And that's one of the things that they told me, find out what she'd like to order, and you order it for her. No. I don't think so. Nowadays, with all the stuff you want on the side, uh, can I get the Roquefort and can I have that on the side? <laughs> and also with the fish, could I get some ketchup and mayonnaise? Could I have that on the side? And uh, a taco, could I have that on the side? I'll tell you what, my father-in-law is very funny. He's, at, my mother-in-law and my father-in-law, they're almost like the same person and they're never more than like two feet apart from each other. Mm -hmm. But when we go to a restaurant, my mother-in-law will order what she wants, and then my father-in-law goes, yeah, I'll just have that. <laughs> so it doesn't matter what she orders. He has the same thing. So it's wow. like he doesn't want to put any effort to it. <laughs> I want to think. <laughs> <laughs> and it's great. I've never seen him 
not finish a meal that you know she ordered for him so it seems to be working i don't know I, I, when my wife and i go out it's just the opposite oh yeah oh my my wife and i went out to dinner last night to a seafood restaurant a very expensive seafood restaurant and she doesn't like seafood typically so good choice we're already on the so restaurant she ordered something and then of course i had seafood she had a ribeye steak i had seafood which was amazing uh this next one i, I don't know still i think it still kind of applies who pays i i think i have some strong feelings yeah well the man of course uh if a woman tried to pay for a date in the 50s it would be humiliating to guys but dating can be kind of expensive so maybe splitting the check is the right thing to do on the first date here's what you do hello ronnie yeah it's lou um would you like to go and have dinner at scott's seafood tonight sure unless i have a better offer down the line okay well provided that you don't get a better offer yeah i'm down uh, it's our first date ronnie yeah, right, okay so i tell you what you want to just split the bill ahead of time we'll just say let's split it right in half uh, I'm definitely have plans down the line. Oh, so you, you got it. Oops. I forgot to do the phone thing. You're not even doing the <laughs> oh, phone sorry. thing. Yeah, it's better. <laughs> okay. Now that makes the whole thing work. Okay. So, uh, what if that falls through? Would you go out for dinner with me and pay half? Hmm. Sure. That's, that's viable. See, it worked. Yeah. That's viable. Right. Next up procrastinating on asking a girl out was one of the worst things a guy could do when he was dating. I tell you what, when I was a junior, there was a girl who was a senior who was a cheerleader, and I thought she was just the cutest thing, and I had a huge crush on her, but I was a year behind her, wow. and so I never asked her out. That was a big barrier back in the days. Not You, can't, you could date classes down behind mm -hmm. you, but not in front of you. No, they yeah. were so much older. Right. I had so much more experience. Well, anyway, I never asked her out. Last day of the school year, the day she graduated, the, dear, the day that I was going to become a senior, I told her that, and she said to me, Oh, my gosh. I wish you'd ask me. I always thought you were really cute. Oh, wow. I procrastinated. I thought I wasn't in her league. I never asked. Don't do it especially in the year 2018. Yep. Ask. You know a wise person once told me, you don't get what you don't ask for. That's right. Yeah, that is true. Yep. Mm -hmm. That is a wise person. Yep. Uh, the next one, ring the bell. So, and this, this pertains to when you're picking somebody up. Sending an I'm here text didn't exist in the 50s. <laughs> no, not really. <laughs> Get out of here. I'm here. There was a there was a pigeon. You could send a <laughs> yes. pigeon to the door. Maybe smoke signals. Right. When a man picked up his date, he was supposed to go to the front door of her house uh, to call for her. Honking the horn from the driveway. That's poor taste. See, I told you. That's very you poor taste. You can't do that. No. Parents don't like that at all. No. At all. I would not even let my... I would lock the door and not let my daughter out the front door if somebody's pulled up in her driveway and honked. That is so disrespectful. Yep. You're on my property, kid. Exactly. Get, get off my get lawn. Get off my lawn, too. Yeah, by, while you're at it. After meeting the parents before a date, guys were supposed to ask the girl's parents when they wanted her back home. Oh. Uh, <laughs> you never had to ask with me. Uh, you have her home by midnight. You understand me? <laughs> uh, having a working watch is the best way to make sure you didn't bring her home back to home too late. Especially if you wanted to go on a second date. Yeah, that's the that's the best way to ruin the second date is to bring her home late the first time. It yep. ain't happening. Yep. There's a country song about that where <laughs> they're coming home late, daddy's sitting in a lawn chair in the front driveway with a shotgun. <laughs> that would be me. That would be me. Well you know with today's with the phones you could certainly set a reminder yeah. in there. Mm -hmm. Hey, time to leave. Right. Uh, so absolutely no excuse. No. Uh, this next one. Now, this is old fashioned. Don her coat. Her so, coat has a name? <laughs> Don. Yeah. Huh. Uh, if you wanted to show your date how polite you were, you would help her put her coat on. What, is she lame? She have two uh, arms? You know, it's they have to get... The, the dresses they wore back in the day were a lot more constricting. Put your own damn coat on. Uh, it would be extra special if you offered her your coat when she didn't have one. 
Wow, if I'd have known that, I, I, I'd have been married for 40 years. Wait a, I still, Wait a minute. I still do that. But you know what? I am i don't get that cold. Maybe it's all them years in patrol without a coat. Yeah. But I have pretty thick skin. We went to see a concert here a few weeks ago, and it was a late night outdoors concert. I was wearing shorts and a t-shirt. Vicky was wearing jeans and a hoodie. <laughs> and so... <laughs> Uh, yeah. yeah. I don't like to be cold. My Nothing works on me when I'm cold. It wasn't that My cold. My finger though. locks up. It wasn't that cold. It was 60s. Low mm. 60s. It's a little and, chilly. Yeah, and there was a little bit of a wind. It was down like where there's a delta breeze. Whatever. All right, next up, open the door. Oh. Back in the 50s, that's what you're supposed to do. Real gentlemen open car doors for ladies. Really. Men are supposed to open any door for their date and let them walk in first. I think that still holds true. I I will always hold a door for a woman, for a, even for a guy. Yeah. You know, but here's the deal. If that's something that you can respect or appreciate before, at least say thanks. Right. Thank you. Maybe that's two words. Maybe you're too busy. But thanks. Appreciate it. Something like that makes the world a better place. Yep. That's all I'm going to say. Uh, this next one, I don't see this happening very much anymore. I'm not even sure people understand it. Uh, curb it. So chivalry may not be considered dead if men still walk between their date and the curb or the sidewalk. I do that. And you know why that is? Yeah, so Cars. They get, and they don't get splashed. So you could, oh, that's true. Yeah, true enough, that, that mm. too. But you could, you know, if somebody was like veering towards you, you could jump and push, push them, them out, out of the way. way. Yeah, 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 that type of thing. Mm-hmm. Now, this side is where my dog walks, so... Oh, poor dog. <laughs> yeah. I hope the dog's insured. <laughs> All right, next up on our list of ridiculous dating etiquette from the 50s, be loaded. Get half-baked. <laughs> no, they're talking something different here. Read, read ahead a little bit. Oh, with money, that there is. There you go, yes. Okay, so maybe being rich wasn't a dating rule in the 50s. However, men were expected to bring enough money along so that the woman didn't have to pay for anything. Ah, a true gentleman pays. Yeah. Yeah, I think uh, so. But again, like I'm saying, on the first date, you know what? I've got a little at risk. You've got a little at risk. Why don't we just go, look, you know what? We don't want to owe anybody anything. Let's split it down the middle or I'll pay for me and you pay for you. That's probably the best thing on a first date. Maybe even a second date, depending. Yeah. Yeah. But you know what? The guy, the guy should pay. All right? That's my feeling. And this one, no kissing on the first date. I did, don't know. Did, did uh, you brush your teeth? Uh, yes. Oh, then you can kiss me. <laughs> I'd rather not, but thank you anyway. Maybe we'll save that for after this episode. I don't know. I just think that, uh, you know what? A, little, a quick kiss seems so innocuous. I don't... Yeah, it's really not that much. And... Hey, if the girl's not into it, if you lean in and she backs up, you got to stop. That hurts. Well, you don't want to... No, no, I understand what you're saying, and, and I appreciate it. You don't want to be in the same seat that Brett Kavanaugh is in right now. <laughs> God knows. <laughs> but, you know, I got to tell you, I feel like, and I think this holds up in 2018, I feel like if you don't kiss the girl on the first date... She's going to want a second date. Oh. She's going to want to know why you didn't kiss her on the first date. And she's going to want that kiss even more on the second date. There might be something to Gallagher, that. Gallagher, out. <laughs> Mouse drop. <laughs> Uh-oh. Oh, no. Uh-oh. I hope we were done with that segment, Ronnie. Yep. Because we are now. Yep. All right. Uh, those are some dating rules on etiquette from the 1950s, and I think really overall, Ronnie... They mostly stand up today. I think they do. Yeah. You know, chivalry, you can say what you want about it, but but really, there are some things that, that should be done. And for instance, if you're going on a prom date, and I know our audience is way older than that, but that's a great time to open and close a door for a girl when oh, she's got her long yeah. dress on or something yep. formal or a wedding or whatever the case may be. Chivalry is not dead, my friends, and women will respect you more if you do some of these rules and apply them in the year 2018. You know what? I, just as a little aside, I do a lot of security still 
for Jesuit High School, which is a, a Catholic school here in Sacramento. And they're, they're actually, they're all over the United States. There's Jesuit schools all over. Um, but when they do senior ball and junior prom, a lot of times you'll see the guys walking up to the front door and their dates, because they're wearing high heels, are lagging 10 or 15 feet behind them. <laughs> The the chaperones at the school, they're they're all teachers and coaches and what have you, tell them, what are you doing? Your date's back there, go get her. And so they really do. They're they're instilling that that little sense of chivalry in the kids, even at that level, because kids really they forget it. They they know it, they know what they should be doing. And when they give it their buddies, it kind of goes right out the window. I don't think there's chivalry in Call of Duty. <laughs> no, I don't think so. Is, did I get that right? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Or Grand Theft Auto. <laughs> right. There's not a lot of chivalry <laughs> no. going on there. Should, and that's what they're growing up. Yeah. All right. Yep. That'll do it right there, my friends. Uh, if you would like any more information on us, please see in the comment section below. Um, we respond to all of your comments. And, and appreciate them. Yep. We like to think of ourselves as very approachable, and um, we love to hear from you. Yeah. Also, uh, if, if you would, subscribe to our show and hit the bell. Uh, when you do, you get notifications of each time our show comes out new, uh, and uh, you'll see it before anybody else does. Yeah, that's important. All right. Uh, if you would, notice our sponsors below. And I'm Lou Gallagher. I'm Corvette Ronnie. What do you say we do this again on the next Men Are So Smart? I'm down. I'm down too.